on HBO. We've talked about the vow on this show. He actually, and good for him, he, or was it, he sued HBO or was it someone else? Uh, someone else. Uh, a, a different documentary that was uh, on Stars, I believe it was, called Seduced. That was also about uh, the Nexium group. Yeah, chick chat, please, Dan. Um, <coughs> you now he said, oh, it is. Okay, good. Now he said, I recently saw your coverage of poking holes in the Andrew Tate narrative, which mm -hmm. is true. Um, now I've been critical of Andrew Tate, but I think he does a lot of good things too. And it's just not fair. All he wants to do is help a generation of men. And then so what? He's the bad guy. Men need. Um, there is a direct line between, uh, there's a direct like line between Andrew Tate, his victims and his fandom and Nexium. Okay. It is identical. The methods are very similar and the output is also pretty similar too. It's just that Nexium wasn't as like popping on social media. So, um, Ethan is, e Ethan eviscerates this cult member. For those of you who don't know, this was like a cult that basically also started with like self-help shit that turned into a sex cult. Ethan is going to have a conversation with a cult member who's trying to run PR for the cult itself. Uh, and I think he did a pretty good job with this. So let's voice. take a look. That's where me and Mark Elliott agree. Given your commitment to pursue truth and openness to challenge prevailing narratives, Mark said in his email to me. I believe you would be fascinated with my story and the recent developments that have unfolded in the case against Mr. Ranieri's. Specifically, seven digital forensic experts, including four former FBI, have come forward with evidence showing that a scientific, with scientific certainty that the FBI tampered with the child uh, prawn digital evidence in the trial. Keith was convicted of having child P word uh, and, you know, all kinds of other horrible stuff, which he's all innocent of, according to Mark. Also, I want to mark the one thing that I find really interesting about Mark is that through Nexium and with Keith's teaching, Mark, who has Tourette's syndrome, is complete. He just said, I'm done. He did my mind. He faked that, by the way. He didn't have Tourette's syndrome. But, like, that was a big component in, like, you know justifying the truth about or like selling the truth of the cult and mine is also, more Ethan powerful is than matter and i'm done with tourette's he said so he asked me would you be open for a short call he says i have no doubt you'll be very you will be at least very intrigued thanks for your time so that's mark inspirational thinker uh, speaker and i said to myself i am interested i do want to talk to mark uh, and so Mark is actually on the phone and, you know, we've been, tra we've been setting this up for a couple of weeks. So Mark, whenever you're ready, there he is. Thanks man for being here. That's so, it's so awesome to, to meet someone like you. That's great. Thank you uh, so much for having me. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can hear you. Great. Okay. Perfect. I heard a little bit of the introduction. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. So why did you reach out to me? I guess, first of all, I'm yeah, he looks like Austin in an to an uncontrollable degree like it, it is weird dude he looks exactly like Curious austin about your whole journey maybe you could start there well you know as as i had wrote you in the email um you know i my myself my team we had been researching different people that are willing ultimately to challenge challenge the status quo um, right and uh of course the andrew tate was one of the biggest stories you know it was an international story uh, and there was, you know, some people like yourself that were willing to at least question. Right. Uh, with our situation with Keith and Nexium, is that there has been basically one narrative for the past five years. This actually started about five years ago. It was in 2000. <coughs> it was in October of 2017. Now, when just the New to York clarify, article, Keith Ranieri is, is the leader. I guess I don't know what's the correct term of Nexium, and he was he was convicted for. Jeez, it was like seven different felonies, huh? But he yeah, so he, he didn't convicted. do any of it. Yeah, so I'll I'll definitely get to all of that. Um, what he was he was convicted of many different things, including sex trafficking, forced labor, mm -hmm. uh, racketeering, um, wire fraud. Yes, I believe yeah. wire fraud. 
yeah, yeah. Now, although I believe, you know, he's innocent, that's ultimately not why I reached out to you. Right. Um, it was given the fact that the narrative um, was, you know, basically an international narrative creating this, you know, basically was a hate campaign against. Bro, he's literally Austin through the Chad filter. Like, I can't. I, it's just so weird, man. It's so weird, dude. It's Yassified Austin. It's freaking me out, dude. I can't I can't look at his face. It feels so strange, dude. It's Keith Raniere and Nexium mm -hmm. and the community. Sure. Anyone anyone that was uh trying to speak out was basically vilified you know anyone that you know came out in support of let forget keith even just uh came out of support of nexium uh was vilified in the now, media I, you know i, I actually really support nexium i think it's super interesting what they've been able to do <laughs> i want to say uh, andrew Tate, what, an, what an interesting take to just even say out loud i i totally poke holes in that like i don't know if you've been following the case in romania but like there's so many red flags that says he's innocent i don't know if you've been following that i haven't been following it closely obviously it's definitely been uh something i've been watching from afar as it seems like there's just a lot of similarities in the fact right. that uh you know we live in a time that if you make someone a monster in the media uh -huh. You know, it's, you know, guilty, you know, basically you're guilty until proven innocent. Right. You then, the authorities oh, well, can then just ultimately to, just do whatever. Stop okay, well, but like he was literally guilty in a court of law. Like he was proven to be guilty. He's in jail for the record. There. They want to the person. Sorry to cut off. Actually, Keith was convicted of seven crimes, though. Yeah, my, the the reason I said that is because right, okay. before the trial even happened, right, he was right. already vilified and right. made into a monster. You even right. have, uh, even on the Dr. Oz show, this was before Keith was even arrested. You have Dr. Oz mm -hmm. uh, saying on national television that Keith uh, raped and tortured women. Oh, my now, God. Now, just so you know, even after he was convicted of these charges, and right. this is what's mind-blowing for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Keith Ranieri, who's, uh, you know, this alleged sex cult leader uh, of an international sex cult, right. if you actually look at the charges and the evidence of what mm -hmm. he was convicted for, there's not a single charge. <laughs> this is crazy. There's not a single charge of violence, weapons, or drugs, and there's not a single charge of Keith Ranieri having sex with someone. Um, well, let's see here. <laughs> what? To, what? Let's see. Cons uh, sexual exploitation what? of a child, he was convicted of that, right? I just want to, I just, because I want to clear his name with you. So he was convicted of sexual exploitation yeah, so of a child, I, possession of child pornography. Yep. Uh, he was convicted of trafficking for labor and services, extortion, sex trafficking, forced labor, um, attempted sex trafficking. So he tried and failed, but in other ways he was successful. That's what they claim, right? But th it's outrageous that he, yeah. And he was never, well, me, he was never, he was never, yeah. he was never violent. And so that kind of says it all, huh? Yeah, I want to be super clear. There's okay. most of what people have heard about Keith in the media and then what the government, you know, put out there in the media as well mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, completely false. And most of it is completely fabricated. Right. Again, that's not my intent of why I wanted to come, uh, you know, on and, and talk with you guys. Um, obviously, if we had longer, you know, conversations, we could look at more specifics and things about Keith Ranieri and who he is as a person. But in the emails, why I got in touch with you is, is that one of the things that happened right before the trial, you know, here you had uh, an investigation of for a whole year. And the uh, there were six co-defendants and this whole case was about consenting adults. And then 55 days before trial, right. it was all also of a sudden, about wire fraud, all of a sudden, trafficking, racketeering. Child. Yeah. So those were all the different charges. OK. OK. But even with, OK. OK. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, just to be clear, though. Even with all of these horrific charges, sex mm -hmm. dude, even for all of his like weak moments, uh, where he like says, uh, you know, wild shit, this is Ethan Klein at his fucking best, okay? When you put him up against like an absolute demon, okay, an absolute demon who is like defending a convicted sex trafficker, like child pornographer. Okay, he is so fucking good at just trolling the literal living shit out of a dude like this who just 
made a major mistake. A major mistake of not doing his research and coming on this fucking show. Trafficking, forced labor, yeah. racketeering. Wire None fraud. of the co-defendants had pled guilty. None Wire of the Dick writing is of crazy it. right now. You'll understand why I'm saying this when you watch this video. None right, of, right. None of them have pled guilty, which is almost unheard of in federal court. I think it's like 97% you of people You couldn't flip them because they they're There's, innocent. There's nothing to flip. So the thing is, is that 55 days before trial, all of a sudden the FBI found child pornography. And when mm. I say child pornography, they found 22 photos of a nude woman. Mm -hmm. on an external hard drive. It wasn't on his computer. It wasn't on a camera. It was on a random external hard drive in uh, a residence that many people frequent in. It wasn't even Keith's home. So of course, the moment they found that it completely changed the whole dynamic of the case where now you have uh, minors involved. Right. And, 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 not and, and they could they have planted it. I mean, the FBI has a track record of doing stuff like that. I mean, they are, they're just monsters. The FBI, I don't trust them at all. And I think they probably planted it. But my concern, at least just from the optics point of view, because, again, I'm on your guys' side. Camille was a 15-year-old who testified. She wrote a victim statement, impact statement, that said that he took, he actually raped her when she was 15. And she put out a statement and, and all that. It's crazy. Oh, she said she met him when he was 13. And then she, when she was 15, he yep. was 45 and he slept with her. But that... That's just, why was she lying like that? Yeah, so I want to make something very clear. I don't support sexual assault against women in any way. And no, I know. Any of my friends who, of course. who are out there. So I, what's the argument? But like young girls that are 15 is like, what, free reign? Like, what, what is the, what's this motherfucker saying? He's like, he's like choosing his words very carefully. He's like, not women, but 15 year olds though, it's like, 13 year olds, 15 year olds, that's different. Like, I just what want the to make fuck? that very clear of as course. it's a very sensitive subject. Yeah, of course. What? I'm what glad he made it very clear. And then the but, dude, he said, but. That's wild. That's a wild thing to say, but over, dude. How about you keep the but part of the conversation locked up, locked away? saying though and then i will get to the the uh, she did say those things but what's important yeah, okay, to realize okay. is that the child pornography was was all of a sudden found 55 days before trial and then right. all the co all other co-defendants <laughs> pled guilty so oh. not only was he co was he charged with possession of child pornography he then was also charged with sexual exploitation of a minor which is probably one of the most egregious charges somebody can get against them you know charged against them which ultimately yeah. and, and, is and uh, everybody knows it's literally illegal to find further evidence like sorry when you're doing a when you're doing an investigation you can't find additional evidence oopsie it just like doesn't work that way you know what i mean investigations immediately must stop halt cease your investigations into the matter now a just, death sentence for many people. Yeah, and just to go jail. back to what you're saying, 55 days before trial, it's like, it's like, when did they have the time to investigate that, you know? Well, just, well, they also had had this hard drive. During the investigation and discovery period, it is illegal to discover new evidence. Yes, that's what he said. And this cam, this alleged camera for over a year. So, so yeah. So that's the, 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 that's the context which happened right before trial. Uh, yes, Camille, uh, her name is Cammie. She did uh, give a victim impact statement, mm -hmm. but what is important for people to realize is that a victim impact statement is after the trial is over, after the verdict. So it's a statement given on, not given under oath. Well, after the trial so you're is saying over, she also didn't test. You're, you think she's lying, essentially. I mean, or at least there'd be no consequence to her lying, right? That's my point. I'm I'm not yeah, here yeah. to debate whether or not. Yeah, that's you don't want to call her a liar. I, I get it. What, but you know what's but crazy? What I'm saying is okay. Go ahead. Yeah. What, what I'm just saying it's important that we live if we want to live in a society that has due process and we care about justice. It's important to question. Absolutely. It's important to question. And my point is, if somebody gives a victim impact statement and says mm -hmm. I was raped and this happened, 
I'm not saying that's not true, but you can't say that that's ultimately true due process when someone's not for under sure, oath. For sure, there was no trial. And so I mean, that's so that's my point. What I there do was no know trial. For sure, like, which why was we supposed to take her impact statement seriously when there was no trial? That is my point. Okay. What I do know, which is under oath and uh, you know sworn statements, is what I got in touch with you about mm -hmm. with respect to we now have seven digital forensic experts, and this is what's incredible. Four of is those it? seven, four of the seven oh, are sorry, former sorry, before we go, FBI. Before we go down that thread, I just wanted to mention, and I don't know if this is an issue for you guys, but there was 15 other victim impact statements from all different individuals. So that's like, dang, how do we get over that? Again, there's, Bro, if we had like a three hour how podcast, does he, I can go. How does he not understand he's getting cooked? Which is crazy. Like Ethan doing a slow burn. And just like very slightly, slightly releasing the gas valve. Just like ever so slightly. Like he is, how does he not recognize that this is a hostile environment? How much of a fucking cultist are you? That you think other motherfuckers also are just going to sit there and be like, wow, I know the crimes that this person is has committed. I know the crimes that I'm going to sit there and fucking defend. And he doesn't even realize, like, at least he should have had, like, I don't know, he should have done his due diligence. He did so much. He did so much work trying to defend, like, child pornography and no work to find out whether or not the show he was going on was going to attack him for it. It makes no sense. Go okay, to different things. Okay. This is the short of it, though. Just okay. to even answer, like I said... Uh, my intent wasn't yeah. to try to yeah, yeah. Uh, defend yeah. or combat like all these different allegations. But right, right. again, what people don't realize the way that the narrative was out there is that 17,000 people, 17,000 people from around the world took these courses. Okay. Mm -hmm. One in 400 of participants in the classes that Keith had created were billionaires. We had people from Stanford, from Harvard, uh, entrepreneurs. These were very thoughtful, rational people taking right. courses that kind of had like a profound Scientology effect on way, their life. Right? I mean, Scientology is the same way, and they get vilified too. They have tons of famous people, tons of rich people, and it's unfair that Scientology is vilified, don't you think? I haven't taken Scientology. Right. Okay. I don't okay. agree okay. with... Oh my God, Ethan just literally signed this up. Signed this dude up for Scientology. He's going to like investigate Scientology after immediately after this interview is over and become the latest cult member. Oh my God. He's like, oh shit, there's another cult out there? That's crazy. I, what the fuck am I doing defending Keith Rainier when I could just be a part of Scientology? Yeah, I, but, well, no, but, but my point is I don't agree with character assassination right. um, you know, or speaking badly about a group just because they're different or you don't like them. But okay, I the reason you. I mentioned about the 17,000 is, is that if you actually look at the trial in the Nexium trial, He's called There's stacking. actually, out of 17,000 people, I think in the trial, don't take my word for it, I think there's only three people that were students of the 17,000 that were even claiming uh, they were victims of a crime. So the only, so three so, out of seven. I mean, dude, you can't argue with those. Dude, he only, he only predated three children out of 17,000 students. I mean, this is literally you fuck one goat, but for pedophilia, okay? It's like you go your whole life without fucking a goat, and then you fuck a goat one time, and everyone calls you goat fucker, but instead of goats, we're talking about children, okay? That's insane. What an insane argument to make. But he's making it brilliant. Actually brilliant, dude. Fucking, he said... <laughs> He said, think about all the people that he hasn't sexually assaulted. Only three so, people claimed that they were molested by Keith. Well, no, they weren't even claiming oh, oh, that they oh, were oh, molested. Oh, oh. There's not even, this is what I, this is like how, the, the insanity and the, the exaggeration of what's out there. Right. The, the, there's not a single charge of Keith assaulting or raping or, or hurting anyone uh, means of violence. There's nothing. There's nothing in the trial of that. Right. There's no violence. They're only. They're only saying he coerced them, but that's not really a crime, is it? 
Well, that's what they're claiming. But, but right. my point is, is that if you want to look at the reality, if you even want to say that everything that happened in the trial is true, yeah, this is a man who's now like, what is he saying? Like, is he saying that like the 15 year old girl was like asking for it? Because like gross. Okay. Somehow a, a fucking level that I did not think the the sex cult uh, victim slash also brainwasher. This guy's not a victim either, by the way. This guy's like literally doing advocacy for the sex cult. So like, remember that. Um, is is saying now convicted and sentenced to 120 years without yeah, any violence weapons drugs right and told and i'm with you 100 because coercion is not even a crime like you can it's not illegal to manipulate people we, well you it black just means you're smarter a in a way not even a, you know what i mean like if you're if that's you're not able even, to manipulate people to do what you want this just means you're smarter so again, and this is a whole conversation about, you know, things in the trial, right. but the, the bigger issue, the, the, the thing that is, I think, vital and uh, relevant to everyone who's, li you know, listens to you and then also just, all, you know, citizens in the United States, we now have four former FBI agents that right. were digital forensic experts that have come out that under sworn testimony shows that the child pornography evidence was to a scientific certainty tampered with wow. and also planted that is very and some concerning. of the evidence points and some of the evidence points that some of those cap uh some of the modifications took place while in the possession of the fbi that is very concerning so what is the um so what's the goal here to get a retrial for keith well part well the, the ultimate goal is trying to investigate um these crimes right. uh, there's clear probable beyond probable i'm gonna okay i gotta say something here before we continue i will never ever in a million years take the justification that ethan didn't know what he was doing ever again or had could not control his urges ever again because this motherfucker is shutting down like a goddamn steel trap okay it's been like 20 minutes and he hasn't fucking caved or broken character one fucking time bro if you can do this for this interview you can also get away with like a like a two-hour broadcast where you don't say things about the nra uh, you know what i mean i mean come on come on dude he, he's like he is so tapped in he is so laser focused if you can if you get away with this level of uh, mischief you know you should you should be able to control yourself about uh, you know the nra cause that that crimes were committed by fbi agents and potentially even the prosecution and maybe um other entities other entities as well in the doj so we're gonna um, and that is an effect of that yeah because the because crimes <clears throat> were committed against uh someone who is being tried in a trial to mm, convict them right that person should ultimately be let free let him free and so keith let free Keith. Well, what's free Keith. well, what's interesting is that first of all, the FBI is a criminal organization just from the start. I mean, it's insane the things that they've done to people, like tampering evidence in the case of Keith. But I think that because they did that, we should probably just expunge the extortion, the identity theft, the forced labor, the uh, conspiracy to commit identity theft exploiting of a child forced labor <laughs> <laughs> wire fraud and uh a, and so we should we should expunge all those huh I, it took me a second to get your humor because like there's also a little delay i was like is he making a joke i was like oh, yeah i know okay, i know sorry i just uh yeah, but so like, well, what do we do about those other ones, right? Because like, we got to convince everyone that Keith is like, bro. He's still no. It didn't take you a second. It didn't take you a second. It definitely. I don't think he still got it. I don't know how the fuck he broke character, and the dude still hasn't gotten it. What the fuck? A cool dude, bro. I swear to God, people in cults, people in cults are literally like they're just wired a different way. There's no other explanation for this, man. There is no other explanation for what is happening, what we're watching right now. I do not get it. This is just a clear-cut example. You just, like, broke your brain and then rebuilt it in, a, in a, such a weird way.
Uh, well, th this is what I'm saying is, is that we don't need to convince anyone of how cool he is. Um, someone can can think that Keith Raniere, um, they can believe he's the devil. That's mm. um, that's ultimately irrelevant and a distraction to the reality of did this person receive due process? If we want to leave it, live in a society that we want to have a justice system that treats everyone exactly the same, whether you think someone is the devil or you think someone is uh, Mr. Rogers, they should be treated exactly the same under the law. Now, if it's the case that the government actually had evidence on Keith Raniere, then the question then becomes, well, why would they need to fabricate and tamper with evidence? Right, right. That is the question. Free Keith. Actually, well, I want to talk. I want to just to answer. Oh, go ahead. You. I wanted to ask you just about the your last thing. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to just make one other comment because you said, as I know, you were you were being facetious about yeah. all these other charges. Yeah. Mystitious. Not a word, dog. Yeah, yeah. If you add, again, there. By the way, the subtitles correctly said facetious, but that's not what he was saying. He was not saying facetious. He said mystitious. <laughs> Subtitles said facetious. I don't think you know, he said that. These these buzzwords of sex trafficking and forced labor. Yes, those on, on its face value sound horrific. Buzz, right, buzzwords. <laughs> what does it even mean? If, exactly. If right. you, like when you think of you know if you heard that you're you know someone that you know got charged with sex trafficking, what would you imagine? Yeah, I would imagine somebody was locked to a you know a a a, fur, uh, a, 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 a what do you call? Yeah, locked to a Fairness. radiator, doing forced to do like or webcam radio. work, or you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. what, and that's a real. That, by the way, is a real thing. Sex trafficking, people being kidnapped, yeah. forced into sex slavery, is a real thing. If you actually so, look at the evidence of what a real thing that Keith Rainier did, by the way, or attempted. Sorry, attempted happen in this trial. You have a 29-year-old female who is an actress living in Manhattan, who is a part of the Nexium community. She was taking classes. She was in a relationship with Keith. She also had a history of being more kinky. Together, She's they had kinky. come up with, with an experience where, uh, and what? this is literally, if you look at the transcripts, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. One woman, this 29-year-old, received oral sex from another woman, and no money was exchanged. She took a bus from Brooklyn to Albany. Right. And they convicted Keith Raniere of sex trafficking. Cause she, just because she was kinky. Well, that's one way to look at it. Right. The same woman, the 29-year-old actress, she's also the victim of the alleged forced labor. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who had to transcribe five hours of video for a memorial, and she read 50 articles that Keith had written. And she gave feedback on them and actually loved reading them. Mm. He was convicted of forced labor. Because because she wasn't now, paid for her work or what? Well, that's what they were claiming. And how and old they was were she? able to concoct. She was 29 years old. Oh, what's, what's, but my, my right. point yeah, is, the, is that right, totally. there, there's what's in the media, which isn't. And of course, if you hear these words, it's not like I don't hear these things. Forced labor, sex trafficking. And it causes Horrible. me to have caution. And I'm like, holy, Can holy I, crap, what, what the, happened here? So, but this one sounds really bad and hopefully because you un, you have such an intimate understanding and you have a great way of explaining it so how do we do the exploit sexual exploitation of a child because that one sounds so bad so how do we break that one down yeah it's uh, just like swerves it isn't rape unless money is involved i fucking knew it yeah that one is also related to the the child pornography as i said so they found 22 photos of a naked woman. Now, by looking at the photos is not how they realized oh, but that it was child pornography. But it's women he it, knew, right? It, it was girl. It was girls he knew. Yeah, this yeah, was, yeah these yeah, are women yeah. that he knew. Yeah, and so um, someone, somebody had pictures of them naked when they were kids, but it wasn't Keith. Well, no, but this is no. Just if right. I could just finish real quick, is, right. is that the twenty-two photos were not deemed child pornography because they were photos of some sexual act. The mm -hmm. way that they deemed them to be child scene. pornography was based was based off of the file dates. And based off of the oh, file dates, they oh. then said when the photos were taken is when this person They probably didn't even look old. like kids in the picture. That's what I'm saying. That's my yeah. point is, is that by looking at the photo, they weren't deemed child Have pornography. You, and I mean, if you saw the photo, which you, you should get a hold of those photos, you, they probably look like- I, What the fuck? 
<laughs> Ethan, come on now. Ethan's like, yeah, hey, find the CP. I've not seen them. adults. I have not seen the photos. Oh, you have those okay. are uh, you know those are contraband photos. Right. But my point is, wait. Okay, so you re okay got it. So you recognize it. Got it. Why why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you see the photo? I'm sorry. Huh. Interesting. That's a bit of an admission, uh, I think. Right? Are they? Is that CP then? Because I thought it was fake. What, what happened? Is that again, when you hear the word child pornography, it incites, you know, all these horrible images and fears. But what we're talking about is on an ex not, not on someone's computer, not on their camera, <coughs> not on a camera card, in a random external hard drive. There's 22 photos right. um, of a naked woman who they deemed this was is... underage because of the file dates. So j just the, the last thing is the sexual exploitation of a minor. Is yeah, that's so weird. Why is it contraband if the fucking photos are of an adult woman? Like, why? why did he have such a... Why did he have such an immediate reaction to that? You know what I mean? It's like, huh, odd. It's because supposedly they were able to- He keeps saying underage woman. Uh, oh my God. He, like, you can't say, you can't say woman <coughs> when you're talking about a 13 year old. And also like underage woman is an insane thing to say. To link through a media card and from a camera and that media card to a scientific certainty by seven digital forensic experts, four former FBI was modified while in the possession of the FBI because they were able to link that media card to a camera that's allegedly Keith owned. That's how he was charged with sexual exploitation that's of a minor. That's so ridiculous that like, that's all they need. Wait, I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're being, no, uh, I'm dead serious. Like what the fuck? Like it's scary. The world we live in where like, and people yeah. can just say whatever and then like oh you just change the data on a file card and that's all it takes you know what's wild about this and and a chatter also pointed this out this is a problem that you come to when you don't get your ducks in order okay when you want to tackle an issue head on and immediately rush to hit every avenue right oftentimes the thing that people do is set up a different like logical box right? But internally, some of the avenues that you're tackling immediately contradict one another. Now, what I mean by that is, if it is true that the FBI planted this evidence, why did they have to tamper with the, with the date and time? If it's an adult person that they planted, why didn't they plant CP? The FBI owns plenty of CP. The FBI was the, the facilitator of the largest trove of child pornography on the planet. Why didn't they use one of that? Why did they use an adult woman? If it's an adult woman in the fucking uh, footage, <clears throat> why do you immediately say it's contraband? You know what I mean? Yeah, by the way, what I said is true uh, for the record about the FBI. It's, it just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense that, uh, you know, even in the, in the new logical boundaries that this person is trying to operate, because they're so overzealous, because they're so overzealous about, like, tackling every fucking avenue and hitting it from all angles, they end up... Um, they end up basically contradicting themselves. Takes. It's crazy. It's scary. Yeah, it's the same argument. Yeah, exactly. It's the same argument of the January Sixers. It was Antifa, but also don't arrest them. If it's Antifa, why not arrest them? Antifa is bad, and they did something wrong. As a man, the, I'm scared of that. Everyone should be scared of this. This yeah. is why the I reason we're, we're trying to reach out to people is because the narrative is so strong and the it's prejudice crazy. against Keith and Nexium is so intense is that basically it stops people from having a rational, open conversation about, right. wait a minute, what actually took place here? And what took place here is not just, oh, there was some prejudice in a trial. 
is that clearly you have government actors, specific um, personnel in the FBI. And again, this is not an attack no. on the whole FBI. Actually, there's one thing this I want is, to get your thoughts on here. Uh, so Camilla's the one who he apparently had photos of. That was yes. the 15 year old girl who did an impact statement or she, or no, she did an impact statement and said that he took her virginity when she was 15, which is outrageous. I mean, you can't, the thing is you can't, you can't, I, she, if she was willing, what's the problem? I, I don't get it. But anyway, right. You're like, you understand that. Again, right. Whether or not that happened or it's didn't not happen, assault if she liked it. And Keith is awesome. I'm, I'm starting. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling your humor a little bit more. Like I said, there's a little delay as well. Um, so Camilla, I just want to be so Camilla super clear again. I don't, I, I don't support sexual assault rape in any totally. way yeah i'm not here to be able to uh, uh be a referee about what he said or she said or what happened behind closed doors what i do know is that i don't believe that somebody giving a victim impact statement that isn't under oath which is basically no different from somebody going on twitter and saying i was raped by this person right it's just with absolutely so, no due process right because be he looked at he doesn't even know them so it's like the same as a random tweet like they've never even met no, they oh, they, they do have know met each other. Ethan. Okay, okay. Shit. They do know, but they do know each they other. They do know each other. But do you understand what I'm saying? Though? Yeah, no, absolutely. So Rainier is so this girl Camille, who she said in her impact statement that um, Ranieri and his co-conspirator, who also trafficked Daniela for labor and services, said they confined her to a hotel room, or to a room, sorry, for nearly two years in an attempt to force Daniela to work for him. And then Daniela was told that if she left the room, she would be sent to Mexico without any identifying documents. So that's probably what they mean by like sex trafficking or. This is really good stuff for Ethan to like inevitably do this exact same thing to someone who's defending Andrew Tate, by the way, when more investigation, when the investigation is concluded and more evidence comes out about Andrew Tate's uh, behavior, Andrew Tate's activities and how he actually coerced people. I, I told you, like, uh, I've told Ethan this before about as well, that this is, like, a perfect analogous situation. Chat, calm the fuck down. We're going to move on. I'm not going to rewind. It's very long, okay? Um, it, is a, it is a perfect... It is a perfectly analogous situation, uh, and uh, you can use the exact same tactics, okay? Yeah, he couldn't hold the smirk. I got it. Calm down. Or forced labor, but that's just her, someone on Twitter just making shit up. Well, again, did you see the second season of The Vow? No, I didn't watch the second season. Was that both? Yeah. Gotcha. I, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Again, if yes, from just the the label of somebody, you know, I think it's document servitude. That sounds horrible. <laughs> right. But if, but again, if you just look at the facts, this is a young girl who is staying in who is in a, a room in her family's home. Okay. Like her family's, she was in a room and the door wasn't locked. Right. And if anyone questions me on that, this is incredible. This is how uh, amazing, how a documentary can, can seemingly put eerie music on something and make right. it seem horrific. Right. In the documentary, they're actually doing a voiceover of her reading, like uh, the, from her lines uh, from the, the court transcript. So they're reading it verbatim from what she said in court as she was testifying under oath. And at the very end of this episode, as she's talking about how she's been confirmed. Bro, it's so crazy how you can make like coerced sexual acts on a minor seem horrific by playing creepy music over it. It's like, bro, you've lost the fucking plot, dog. Like when you are saying, when words like that are coming out of your fucking mouth, you've literally lost your mind, okay? Like, they should probably institutionalize this motherfucker just for the safety of others. You know what I mean? Like, he... Like, yo, dude. Obviously. Like, listen. It's so crazy how you can just make anything scary. You know, you, you, you take footage of a guy going to a playground and just, like, randomly shooting children looks so scary by playing creepy music over it. It's like, otherwise, it's a totally normal act! Fine to this room for two what years. Right. Do you know how the scene ends? How? She says, and then I walked out of the room. Oh, because she could have left the whole time. They don't. They don't really put because that she could have. 
Of course, but it's, you know, it's yeah. the scary music and it's haunting and this illustrations and the cartoon right, and it's, right, right. but the way that it's in the media, it sounds as if some that, you know, Keith Raniere you know kidnapped I, I, I this understand, person, I understand put you them in a room. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you. And that's, that is the issue of, you know, again, of why I reached out is, is that in the media can do whatever they want and paint anyone uh, you know, with with whatever colors they want to create a certain image, and that does not necessarily match the reality of even no. just basic facts. Because it's basically her fault for not leaving the room. And what's even crazier is that the whole jury, basically, like how did like they all got? I don't know how the whole jury agreed on that. But I want to ask you about your experience with Tourette syndrome. I'm super super fascinated by this. Uh oh. Um. This is so, so this is why kind of Nexium is, is kind of interesting because everyone always just kind of sees like the, the bad side. That's what's famous now. But Nexium actually has been helping people in these incredible ways. For example, you had debilitating Tourette's syndrome, right? Uh, 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 and then I think you joined Nexium and Keith was able to, to, to help you overcome it totally, like totally cured, like. Your Tourette's is 100% gone? So, yes. The answer is I, I no longer have Tourette's syndrome. Wow. Uh, and it was through the courses that Keith created. It wasn't <clears> even one-on-one <throat> -on -one sessions with anything like oh, I see, with that I with see. Keith. Wow. It was, you know, he had created a curriculum that had was around the world. Like I said, 17,000 people took it. I went through the classes just like everybody else. But as I went, went through them and started to build more self-awareness about myself, I mean, ultimately, the courses are, and are classes on... Uh, emotional intelligence. You know, we we had a, a center here in New York City on Seventh, Fifth, uh, uh, and Thirty Seventh Street. You know, where it's just you go and sit in chairs and you have conversations with people. And that cured That's, your Tourette's. You know, that is just that. Just having so that. I just want to be clear. It's not. Go ahead. Yes, it was through through these conversations and through these classes, which right. were uh, a lot of them were philosophical inquiries right. about different aspects of life. There were practical things. It was also a goal setting thing for entrepreneurs. Okay. And it was through these classes and these conversations that beat my Tourette's completely mind over body. Wow. And so what is it that you tell yourself? Like, ah, just stop ticking. Like, come on, don't be a pussy or whatever. Or I know I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. But like, ah, I'm fuck. I'm over. This shit sucks. Tourette's is fucking annoying. And I'm just over it. The, yeah, so it's uh, it's not like that at all. Uh, the the most simple way that I can describe it is that I, I've always talked about Tourette's is like there's an itch and there's a scratch. Oh yeah. And the Tourette's is that uncomfortable <laughs> feeling. Mm -hmm. And then the 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 ticking is me scratching that itch. Yeah. Tell tell Ethan, right, Ethan. You know, it's like a it's like an itch and a scratch, man. Yeah. And <laughs> most uh most uh, treatments and the way that we look at Tourette's is, you know, okay, how do we just help the person with this dynamic? So if you take medication, it numbs the itch. Mm -hmm. So that stops you from wanting to scratch it because you don't but feel you the intense. Like, you know, well, the if, if you're talking to someone with Tourette's syndrome, how would you, what would kind of be your advice to them? Because I know it's just a horrible disease for the people who haven't cured it for themselves yet. And I feel like this, yeah, knowledge, the, yeah. What, would, what would be your advice? Well, I don't say... Just to be clear, I, I've never said, and so we we actually had a documentary that came out. It's called My Tourette's. It's on YouTube for free now. Okay. Um, sadly, almost no one in the world knows about it. It came out after, um, you know, the the negative press, the real negative press uh, started coming out about five years ago. Bro, sadly, no one saw our propaganda piece that we did about a man faking Tourette's and faking the curing of his Tourette's. So no one saw it. It's just so sad. Nobody will look at like the other fake shit that Keith Rainier is doing <laughs> and only spe uh, focusing on the very real horrific crimes that he has committed. Years ago, okay. but in this documentary, you, you watch this, these profound transformations of people beating Tourette's mind over body. But even in the movie, we don't say it's a cure. This is not it. We didn't have a cure for Tourette's. Clearly, we had a set of tools for people that were open and wanted to go on a different type of journey, you know, go on more of a, a, a looking inward. But you guys did cure For it. some... You said it's 100% gone. I mean, let's not beat around the bush. That sounds yeah, like Yeah, I just cure. don't say... The reason I don't say cure is because also I just don't think of it as something that you can cure in that way. I have like a right. completely different... I don't even think of it as a medical disorder in that way now. But what? I just want to be super it. clear. Is that <laughs> it's, Bro! He said... He said... 
Therese is just vibes, dog. A lot of this, a lot of these disorders are just fucking vibes based. Also, another hallmark of cults is like how much they weaponize things that, you know, uh, things that are studied in psychology while simultaneously shitting on psychology and, and just the medical industry in general, uh, medicine in general. It's always very interesting. It's like, yeah, uh, I guess it kind of makes sense. I mean, every, every cult does this, by the way. Scientology does this. I mean, L, L. Ron Hubbard was like very notorious for, for uh, his anti-psychiatry, anti-psychology takes. It's very interesting. It's science denialism, but there's, a, there's an element above that. It's not just science denialism. It's specifically shitting on psychology while simultaneously using things that you would only know about if you actually studied psychology to break people down. It's like, um, it's like looking at the components of like love bombing or gaslighting or whatever the fuck and being like, oh, none of that shit's real while also learning how to do it and like using it to your advantage. Forbidden wrist style, exactly. I don't know if we could help everyone. I don't know that. Okay, uh, the people okay. that we helped wanted to be helped. Okay. If someone wants to lose weight, they could have the best trainer in the whole world, but if they don't want to lose weight, but you know, weight's it doesn't not, matter if you got a weight's not a, Yeah, but being fat is not a neurological disorder. So that's what really interests me. Because according because of, to all the literature, it says Tourette's cannot be cannot be cured. I, I so it's incredible. Look, preaching to the choir. I, yeah, right. I, I lived with it for tw I, I for twenty years. I became uh, a well known inspirational speaker around the country, talking about Tourette's, living with Tourette's. My whole life was based off of Tourette's. I can't imagine uh, how hard that I, was. I get been. it. It was, uh, you know. So then to 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 take a class on emotions, and now to be able to have a conversation with you like this. I couldn't even have dreamt of it. I mean, it, it just wasn't even something that could be possible because of like, like what you said. So, I have Tourette's, this neurological and genetic disorder that's involuntary and has no cure. Luckily, so, because of, the, of what Keith created and with Nancy Salzman, who also is in jail now, uh, he, he, I've been able to go on, on, on a profound uh, journey to live a very different life. Can I ask you a question? To answer do your you question, do you still get yeah. the urge to do ticks or is that completely gone? Like, where, where did you cut it off? So the, that, the, the, the thing about the itch and the scratch, because of how the courses were very different, it's not like I'm sitting here. And my itch is a hundred percent. And I'm just like, okay, right. don't tick. Don't say, don't say something, you know, hold it back. Right. The, right. the courses were different than any other thing that I did is because by going on that exploration. He lied, right? He never actually had Tourette's, right? Like, well, I don't think you can like, quote unquote, cure it. He's just lying. He hasn't admitted it, but yes. Okay. I found out that, that my itch was way more emotional and psychological than it was physiological. Oh, and as a result, and working internal issues I had, anger stuff, um, beliefs about all this sorts of stuff, as a result of that, my itch went down. So right now, down to zero. do I still have an itch? Yeah. It's not at zero, but it's probably okay. at four out of a hundred. Okay. 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 So, but so to call that Tourette's is not, I, I don't even think of it as Tourette's. I think of it as I, I'm a person that has a body and all of us have uncomfortable. Four out of 100. Yeah. For him, it, it's just turned into defending convicted sex trafficker instead of, I guess, what was it? Someone was saying that earlier it was saying the N word. So he just like, he reappropriated it into defending a convicted sex trafficker. I think that's what happened. That's why he doesn't, doesn't realize what's going on. Comfortable things. And what I, wait, is I, that a spoiler alert? Does he admit that? Oh, fuck man. God damn it. Chad, stop spoiling it. Come dude. to understand. It's like, if you're going to spoil something, spoil the top of the hour ad break that comes 20 minutes into the hour because I forgot to run it. Don't spoil shit like that. God damn it, dude. A three-minute ad break is upon you, though. Okay? Here's a spoiler alert for you. If you don't want the ad break to spoil your uninterrupted broadcast experience, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with Twitch Prime by... 
<laughs> I can't even talk anymore. This is so st- I'm such an idiot, dude. I'm sorry. Okay, you can get gifted a sub. You can fucking subscribe. Anyway, fucking Speed Razor. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Here's a three-minute ad break now. And, and this is for me, is that ultimately I was, in a sense, had an impulse disorder. Mm. That doesn't mean I had a neurological disorder. I and found this as video, I worked thing, or this old video of you, I found really compelling from 14 years ago. Do you mind if I watch it real fast for the audience? Just sure. to kind of give you some, Absolutely. some background. Yeah, so this is from 14. Absolutely. This was 14 years ago from a... Um, Local news story or something like that, right? That covered your story? Uh-oh. Yeah. I was- oh, my God. I literally fucking... I literally revealed it right... Oh, yes. Jesus. And did you... Yeah, so... Okay, let me watch it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I thought you were about to press play. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to press play right now, okay? Are you okay if I press play? Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I thought you were you were hitting it. Okay. Trigger warning, I suspect. Can you play it, Dan? Oh, I, it's with, on me. It's on me. Suspense. You got you right. got to hit play. Are you ready, Mark? I'm ready. Okay. A day before my 17th birthday is when I really ran into the greatest obstacle I had ever encountered with my Tourette syndrome. A St. Louis area teenager who says he has Tourette syndrome claims he was kicked off a Greyhound bus in Indianapolis because of his disability. I got on the bus and uh, they made an announcement about my Tourette syndrome and uh, earlier in line a lady had heard me saying some inappropriate words and she stood up and she said, well how come he can say this word? With that, this Clayton High Jr. who turned 17 tomorrow says he was kicked off the bus in Indianapolis. So you were, your tick was actually to say the N word, right? Yeah, different oh. times I was saying what would be wow. the worst thing that I could possibly say in a given moment. So, yeah. you know, if I was around a fat person, I would want to tick your fat. If I was around a black person, I would want to tick the N word. So at the time, it was a nightmare. At, at the time you were on a bus and with, it seems like from this image, predominantly black. And then you said the N word on the bus. Bro, his, yeah, his, his tick was just being Italian. It seems. Yeah, the, to make a long story short, I had told the bus driver about my Tourette's before I got on, and then I got on the bus, then I was taking it more, and obviously customers were complaining, and rightfully so. I mean, they had right. no idea what was going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the bus driver, you know, they, you know, as I've gotten older, I actually thought the bus, the, the company dealt with it as well as they could. You know, um, I mean, it's just a difficult situation. I mean, just because it's a medical disorder, although I don't see it the same way now, but of course at the time, you know, what do you do? You know, it's it's just not, I don't think it's as simple as, oh, well, this person has a disability. They just have, you know, can do whatever they want, carte blanche. Like, it's a very difficult thing because I'm also saying something that's offending people. Luckily, nothing bad happened. You know, I, I was safe. It could have, it could have escalated and gotten very bad. So you went, um, so did you, okay, so let me keep watching. So you're on a bus and you said the N word and then people got mad at you, I, right? So, so that's the kind of, the sh- and yeah, then the and bus driver kicked you off. Yeah. So let me keep watching. And ultimately, after a few... Elliot says he was on his way home from a church youth camp when the incident happened. Elliot and his family say they've traveled all over the country and never been denied access to transportation. His family calls it a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Up, up to that point... In- so do you, so, I, so I, I appreciate that you guys all made it into like, kind of turned it into like a crusade here and went to the local news about it and stuff because it's... Let, let me... I have a theory for you. I'm ready. Okay, cool. I think you actually fake having Tourette's. Yeah, I don't think, I think you actually don't have it. Well, but and, I, and I'm, I'm open to it. Uh, here's my, what, what, here's what my, think well, I, what did you think I had? <laughs> well, let me, let me just break it down. I think this is kind of a funny thing. I doubt this is what happened, but maybe you're just on, maybe you just called someone the N word on the bus and then you're like, oh no, I have Tourette's. Because what's interesting to me, and I know that's funny, 
but what's interesting to me is that you've made like a whole career yes. being a motivational speaker about how you cured your Tourette's and stuff. And that's kind of become like a big part of your identity. But what's interesting is as somebody with Tourette's, I actually have Tourette's. I know it's not curable. So I just find that claim to be absolutely uh, a pseudoscientific <laughs> crazy claim that has no backing in science or at all. And I think you're actually, uh, in my opinion, right, as as someone with Tourette's, I think you're scamming people. Well, for, uh, first off, I did you say that you have okay. Tourette's? Okay, okay. This part is so funny because, like, this part is so funny because in his mind, I wonder what he's thinking right now. He's like, wait a minute. I found a valuable ally with a massive platform who is going to, like, defend the sex trafficking pedophilia guy, but... Me faking Tourette's is a bridge too far? Uh-oh. I think I fucked it up. Like, what is he thinking in this situation? In his mind, the record scratch moment is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I thought things were going so well. I thought I, thought I found a new ally. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck, man. That's a bridge too far, I guess, for this guy. I do have Tourette's. Yeah, he fumbled the bag. The Tourette's bag was the, the bridge too far, you know? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I know. That's why I was so surprised when you emailed me because I was like, I was like, I have Tourette's and I also fucking hate Andrew Tate. I've like talked like continually and openly relentlessly about what a piece of shit he is and how much I hate him. And what's interesting too Mark, is that I've also talked about how much I hate Keith and Nexium and what a psycho he is. So when I got your email, I was like, this is incredible. And I could totally see how it is you fell into a, into a cult because you clearly don't do any research. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You know, when I saw the, uh, when I was watching one of your videos, I, I thought I saw you ticking. And yeah. so I, I, it did cross my mind. I said, I wonder if he has Tourette's. Yeah, I do. Why would you, that's so interesting. Why would mm -hmm. you, why would you think someone would fake it? That's a pretty messed up thing for someone to fake. No, I agree. But you've made a good living from faking it, doing like motivational stuff and, and writing books and stuff like that. And it's just, as far as I know, and that's just a theory, right? Cause I don't know. I mean, I just have Tourette's myself. I mean, dude, ask that question to literally 90% uh, of people on Instagram. And it's not even just Tourette's. People fucking do, do way wilder shit. Oh, but obviously I don't know anything about you. So it's just a theory. But I just think that you can't... I just want to understand what he watched that he thought was going to make Ethan like a, a, a non-hostile interviewer to him. Like, what did he watch? There's no shot he watched anything, right? What did he watch? Cure it, actually. And on your website, it says you overcame it, mind over body. And that's just not yeah. possible. But that's why, I don't know if you remember what I just said two minutes ago, is that we've mm -hmm. never claimed it's a cure. Right. Well, on, let's see. Uh, let's see. On the, if we pull up your website... Well, when I, when I started, you said you're 100% like over Tourette's, right? You did say that. Yeah, well, I said that I don't think of it as I, I have Tourette's anymore. Right, you um, don't have it anymore. I guess, just, I guess what I could say is... Um, yeah, the fact that you don't like Tate and you don't like Ranieri is not a reason that I couldn't talk to someone. For if, sure. if anything, it's about... That's not the point of trying to find right. people that love him. It's right, right. if you can find people, even if somebody hates someone, the question is, do we believe that there should be due process in this country? And are we okay with <laughs> government officials or FBI agents committing? Bro, this guy literally did. Dude, that's so funny. I'm imagining he just looked at these titles and was like, yeah, okay, this guy is open-minded. That's all it takes for me. He came back and said, why does it lie? <laughs> 
Oh, dude, that's awesome. That is so good. God, that's juicy. Committing crimes to convict a man. Right. So by yeah, somebody the, not liking it. Yeah. But in yeah, for those of you who weren't around uh, earlier today to see this, uh, a similar version of this happen to your boy, me, okay? Here is the former uh, G2 esports executive doing the exact same thing, but with Andrew Tate. And myself, instead of Ethan and Keith Rainier and Andrew Tate. Uh, here is Carlos Ocelot saying, It is fair and honorable to acknowledge when people you don't fancy do the right thing. It honors Hassan to state the truth, even if it alienates his audience. I'm genuinely and positively surprised. Good for him. Handshake want emoji. more information to come out. I think it is a human rights violation, what they're doing to Andrew Tate. I'll, I'll come out and say it. I want more information to come out. Seven second clip. Like, how do you watch a seven-second clip and go, that's probably the truth. That's the, there's no additional investigation necessary. Yeah. So I quote tweeted it with a 36-second clip. Yeah, they're looking for anything and everything. Look, I just want more information to come out. Um, and I want, I think it is a human rights violation what they're doing to Andrew Tate. I, I'll, I'll come out and say it. Like, all things considered, the fact that they won't let him shave his fucking head I mean, dude, come on. Actually, like, you know, I'm a disability advocate, as you guys know. I'm a disability activist, as you guys know. And one of the things that I obviously consider a disability is the follically challenged community. And I think it's vile that this follically ch challenged man is being... Yeah, they're looking for anything... Dude, come on, dude! Yeah! He's so fucking dumb. Of course you're an Andrew Tate fan. Never mind, he's still a dog cunt. Dude, that's why would he post his own L? His whopping L. It's just like why you just you immediately move away from the situation and hope that you don't signal boost it to your follower base. You know what I mean? I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. He's so fucking... It's just... Oh, Jesus Christ. The original per person that posted that clip said they studied body language and know you really think he's innocent? Oh, I love that. That makes me even happier. I mean... Yeah, smartest Andrew Tate fan. Like, smartest tater tot. Smartest fucking tater tot. Oh. I love that. Anyway, let's continue. The email. By someone. Yeah, yeah. But somebody not liking him is, if, if, if anything, is, is definitely better. Um, I definitely did not research deeply every single person. Obviously, at we're all. In a well, yeah, you know, situation. you didn't look. You actually didn't look into it at all. Like the most basic. But let me break it down, Mark, because in a way, I see you as. Well, just to be, just to well, be, hold super, on, just to be very. Okay, go just ahead. Just to be, be very blunt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, be blunt. Yeah, I, you are right. I, I did not do research. Yeah, my someone that I know who's Keith. Currently, he's been sitting in the shoe for over 200 days. So they're basically torturing a U.S. citizen while the same time he has filed. I love like when the only time you can get some of these Americans to fucking be like prison abolitionists is when they're defending a sex criminal, an international sex criminal. It's like, come on, man. Like, yeah, I do believe that like solitary confinement is torture. Okay. Okay. But it's so stupid that, like, the only vocal advocates of this in the media are always defending the worst motherfuckers, dude. In the Eastern District of New York, with four former F FBI agents showing that the FBI tampered with digital evidence. And they're now uh, escalating the torture, and they might ship him to what's known as a CMU. Can I read a excerpt which is a communications from your, Can I write, read an excerpt for you? It says, do you, this is from your website. I, this is your website, right? MarkElliott.com. Yep. Yeah. 
Do you want to beat your Tourette's? I want to help you, but currently the government has threatened to put me in jail for being public about how I completely overcame my Tourette's with Nexium. Yep. So when you Oof. say completely overcame, I just assumed that meant like that you have a cure for it. Yeah, we just, I can't. I Bro, he's still trying to defend. Oh my God, it's fucking bananas that he's still trying to defend like the sex cult leader. And he's using anything and everything he can. It's crazy. I can address that in a second. We can talk about that. But the, the point is, is that. Can you cure like bipolar you or something? Can you cure like schizophrenia? Because that would be really good for a lot of people. The reason. So because of how big the case is. Right. And uh, I'm reaching out to people that have influence. Mm -hmm. I believe that even though you might hate those people. And I didn't know. I didn't know the depth of. of how much you dislike them, but yeah, okay, no. yeah, is that there's something that we can agree upon? I thought at well, least here's that, something. You know, here's are we so okay? Well, we can all agree on that, that, that's we can all agree on photos. Here's photos of his initials being branded into women who accused him of running a clandestine sex cult. Here is his. By the way, Andrew Tate did this shit too. Instead of branding, Instead of branding them, he tattooed them, but it's the same shit, the same initials principle. Branded into their skin. Here's an up close so, for you. Uh, it says it says his initial Keith Rainier is branded into their skin. What what is your what's what's your point? That's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Oh, my point. Um, that the well, thing is the thing. So, so the point right, is right. But, no, that that was just for fun. That was just like a funsies bring, thing. Yeah, but the thing is... It's just is, like a fun look, little I'm, group building exercise? Uh, no, I'm serious. Is, I, I no, I'm, on, se I'm serious. I, why, do you, why did he do this? Because if I'm curious, I want to ask you, why did he is, do it? The thing is, if you're going to... If you're going to say things, they need to be factual. They're just kinky. Keith They're Ranieri, just a little kinky. But Keith Ranieri didn't brand anyone. Oh, right. He, he's not even in the room. He coerced people but to the, do he's it. Not, yeah, so coercion's a crime, not, actually. It, I think you, coercion is a crime. Sex trafficking usually I, happens through coercion, not by uh, locking people to a radiator. So that, I think, is where we kind of disconnect I, there. And actually, what's crazy is I had the told jury you agreed with me. Twelve people I agreed. Had, I had told you before. I know I had told you what? before oh, and the appeal court. is a crime. Oh, what's crazy is he appealed, and then the appeals court also upheld these seven horrific charges against him. So that's like a lot I, of people. I wasn't here. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I, like I had said, I'm. I had said to you in the very beginning is is that I believe most of the things are not true out there. That doesn't mean there isn't kernels of truth. I wanted to talk to you about something that I think is greater than Keith Ranieri, the fact that you, we have evidence that shows that the FBI committed crimes. Yeah, but the FBI. Is, I agree wanted, with you that the FBI is shitty and they do that kind of stuff. But even if we discount everything the FBI allegedly, uh, or you say they, let's just assume for the sake of this conversation that they did do that, then you still have to explain all these other charges. Like, I, I, even no, if I he's not, even if he didn't have child pornography on a hard drive, right? And let's just say he didn't do it, it was a conspiracy, We don't, or maybe they changed the metadata. There's still racketeering, forced labor, wire fraud, sex trafficking, extortion so do you have a do you, you know what i mean so they're kind of an issue here if you're well we've been the, the thing is look I, I i this is the first time we've we've ever met ethan yeah um i said to you in the email of that if you want to have more of an open rational conversation <laughs> we can challenge things in the first half of this i talked to you about some of the facts that it sounded like you, you were agreeing with i didn't realize that you were just trying to play me I, the things that I said, <laughs> I stand by, I don't need to change anything, even though now I know that I guess you were trying to have sort of a, a gotcha moment. But like I said, with the photos, with the woman, the HBO thing, the sex trafficking, which is a single sex act with no money. He says, let's be rational and defend the sex trafficker cult leader, bro. With, who was caught with child pornography. Like I'm man. This kind of makes so much more sense. Like the Andrew Tater Tot dynamic makes so much more sense when you think about human beings like this existing on the planet. You know what I mean? Especially because like 
Andrew Tater Tot did the exact same shit, but then also on top of that, like, he had clout, which is something that is, like, demonstrably important for a lot of the younger generation. And also on top of that, he, like, God damn, bro. He, I mean, also on top of the clout, he was, you know, he, he, he was breaking motherfuckers' brains in a similar way. I just, oof. On the exchange, these are things that yeah, but if so, someone yeah, wants but to you, have a conversation, you, right? But you got to understand that no money exchanged and him not doing it himself is kind of the quintessential of a uh, cultish kind of racketeering, like manipulative course of act. Like he's not the first person, like, right? Like Charles Manson, yeah, like for I example. Said, Does but, Charles is Charles Manson guilty of is, murder? Well, answer that. Is Charles Manson guilty of murder? He never did anything. I don't know. Never. I don't. Okay, I'll explain it to you. I'll explain it to you. Charles Manson. People say he was a member of a cult. His disciples went under his uh, uh, order or coercion to go and murder this family, right? And so his lawyer said, "Well, he didn't do anything. He wasn't even there." And so the question is. Do you think Charles Manson is guilty? He was in jail right now for, for being involved in their murders. Even though he wasn't there, he never held a knife in his hand. You know what I mean? No, no money was exchanged. They didn't even get, he didn't even pay them to do it. I have. Oh, he's dead. No... That's a correction. Let me issue a factual correction. No, this, oh, is, no. this is what I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about the case. Obviously, I know of Charles Manson because of, you know, oh, no. of, of how it's been, you know, he's a he's very popular. He, he, he's probably innocent too, right? Well, I don't know, but what I do believe right. and what I'm absolutely will stand by is that I do think no matter how hated a person is, we should be absolutely open to questioning narratives. We should be able to question. Um, I think, bro, you could do that. You could make this argument about Adolf Hitler, by the way. Like, like this dude is like one step removed from being like, well, Adolf Hitler didn't fucking kill every Jew personally. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? It's like, come on, you just got to go against the narrative, dog. You got to go against the narrative. What the fuck? This is absolute bananas. And for, for someone saying, are men okay? This cult also had a lot of prominent women, okay? Like, it wasn't Allison Mack or whatever. Like, there are plenty of female defenders of Keith Rainier, just like this dude, some of which are still operating within Hollywood. One that is ironically, or I guess unironically, uh, Friends with that fucking conservative guy. Uh, what's his name? God damn it. Uh, the, the fucking conservative guy that constantly talks about like LGBT grooming people. Conceptual James. Yes. Conceptual motherfucking James, dude. Allison Mack is just as bad. She's his Ghislaine, Ghislaine. Part Witnesses, of, we should be able... I think part that, of a redemption mean... of accepting people who are bad starts with them, you know, coming to terms with, with what they've done. But that's what I said from the, from the get-go. I said, I'm not on here to try to get you to like Keith Raniere. But you can... Yeah. I don't know if you remember. I did say, I did say to you, you can think he's the devil. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think he's the do devil. Remember, do you I just remember think... when I said that? No, but no, but my point is, but you're if saying, someone wants you, to believe that. So you're saying we need to. That's take, not what I'm. You're saying we need to take the time to look at the kind of the facts and the situations and come to like you know just with our whole hearts and minds come to a rational decision. Well, my question to you is: That's if, a trial. Do you believe that there are? Do That's you a trial, believe that by there the are way. certain? He lost two of them. No, but do. Do you believe that it is okay under any circumstance for the government or government officials, whether it's a prosecutor, whether it's a judge, whether it's an FBI agent, to commit a crime to of convict? Of course a person? not. No, never, dude. If we agree no. on that, Ethan. Yeah. If you and I can agree on that. Yeah. That's all that matters, and that's why I'm really? here. I don't that, that, care. That doesn't yeah, seem because, very significant. And, like, like, I mean, we can both agree that Krispy well, Kreme if, donuts are great, taste great, but that doesn't fucking do you, really have any, think, why do you that doesn't have that nothing to do, do with like wire not, fraud and racketeering. Why do you believe that that's not significant? Because it doesn't, it doesn't affect all the other unrelated crimes he was convicted of.
But no, but but I think that the part where we're just missing is, is that sure. you keep making it about this case. What I'm saying is what I'm addressing affects every single case. In oh, the this United is States. bigger than Keith. Yeah, the, Keith is not bigger than the justice system. If you allow or you are OK permitting government officials to commit crimes, to convict even a hated person, what you ultimately are saying is that you believe that prejudice and hate are more important than justice. Here's you and Keith. He has really nice skin. Fuck. <laughs> Such a dumb thing. Is, he, uh, you, you, I'm trying to have a. I'm, I'm trying to have. No, I'm me trying too. to have a serious conversation. No, with I was you. just struck by and his really nice skin. Did he ever drop? I'm his, just saying. I, I, yeah. I'm just saying out of respect. I'm trying to have a, a a conversation with you about something that affects millions of people around the justice. You know, in, millions of people in the justice system and are affected by our justice system. Uh, it, this isn't about Keith. It is about Keith because this is the specific case and the specific evidence that we have. Do, do you mind if I take a moment and read some of the quotes from the FBI agents? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let me ask you this. I don't even blame you because honestly, in a sense, you're I, you're kind of the victim of, of uh, you're, you, you know what I mean? Like you're part of this organization that clearly has some powerful hold over you. And I'm I'm really sorry that you got somehow you're involved in this. And I just like Keith is gone. He can't hurt you anymore. For the record, I don't believe this man is a victim. Okay. I think he's like a victim in the sense that like he got duped into the cult, but like he's still like at a certain point, instead of saving yourself, if you are still advocating for this dude after like, you know, the door is closed on the fucking guy, he can't hurt you. He's in fucking jail. You are personally advocating for a guy you're writing for a guy that i mean you're a bad guy you know what i mean you're you're a predator yourself you know what i mean like one of the best one of the best examples that he is not a good person and not a victim okay one of the best examples of that is what i saw with that Tourette's website like he is still to this day using his Tourette's, uh, his Tourette's grift to somehow turn around and, like, defend Keith Rainier. That's so fucking insane, dude. That's insane. Yeah, Conceptual James and, and Nikki Klein. James Lindsay, uh, Conceptual James, is running uh, to Elon Musk to help because people keep replying to his tweets with my screenshot. People need to stop flooding your replies with this photo. As a fan of yours, it's really making your Twitter unreadable. I open replies and this is all I see. Okay, James Lindsay, who was seen here with a member of the Nixium sex cult, whose leader is currently in prison for child sex trafficking. I taught him everything he knows. As good as we look at Elon Musk, is this a solvable problem? God, what a banger. His documentary on curing Tourette's? Yeah, I'm not watching that, dude. Come on. Or, you know what I mean? Like, you're free, bro. I, I, I appreciate the... Uh, I, I do believe that I'm free. I'm an adult yeah. that makes decisions in my just own like life. Just like that girl in the room. Just... You're free, man. Just walk through the door. What I can say, again, is I reached out to you. Um, I'm trying to talk about things that there's a lot of prejudice against talking about mm -hmm. you have a case that has international attention that yeah. has a lot of hate and a yeah, lot of keep, prejudice we're, we're, and okay, now we have okay. that we keep it we're kind of yeah you've said that it's okay listen um i want i really do wish the best for you and I, i'm sorry that you're dealing with all this stuff it seems like you're going through a lot and uh, i just you know i'm sorry man i just i don't know if there's anything you know, they must, do they have photos of you? Like, like they must have, they, cause that was their thing, right? Keith had like blackmail there, There's photos. no photos. I just, yeah, for, okay. for anyone who's listening that wants to find out more, they can go to makejusticeblind.com and they can Ledge. look at the evidence with respect. 
with respect to the FBI and you know what I've been talking Actually, about here. This and this is the video, right? Uh, evidence of historic FBI corruption. This is the one you're talking. Aiden Ross put a green light on Jake Sucky. No, he didn't. He said, "Kill yourself." Okay, come on, guys. After sharing a clip of him showing porn to his audience, Aiden Ross took to my DMs and said, "Keep yourself safe." Smile. He just said, "You know." The non-TOS violating version of Kill Yourself, which I think is pretty funny. Man, why are you always writing for Aiden? Wait, what? I'm not. I'm not writing for Aiden at all. It's... Keep yourself safe does not mean I'm going to kill you. It means kiss your, like, kiss yourself. It's a way to, it's a way to say KYS. What? We're watching the Aiden Ross of Keith Rainier right now. For the record, for those of you who don't understand what's going on, we're literally watching the Aiden Ross of the, the adult version of Aiden Ross right now, but for Keith Rainier. It's analogous to ending an argument with see you next Tuesday. I prefer to say kiss your sister. Keeping yourself safe is lame. Live on the edge. Keith Raniere with an E at the end. Well, is that how you say it? I don't fucking know. Look, I'm sure Aiden has a lot of... What is this? Aiden Ross on his way to stream porn after saying hot dog streamers should be banned. <laughs> Yeah, apparently Aiden Ross. Did Aiden Ross accidentally show the porn or deliberately show it, by the way? Because I have no idea. I didn't I didn't want to look at the clip because I was uh worried that there's like actual porn in it. Wait, he on purpose? He posted porn on he looked at porn, porn? on purpose? Bro. I don't support it. Bro. What do y'all want to watch on Pornhub, bro? What? Oh my god, I thought he like accidentally clicked on a link, dog. He blurred it. This is heavily blurred. The video is heavily blurred. I'm still not gonna show it. Bro, come on, Aiden. Your I audience don't. is fucking children. Jesus Christ, dude. That is actually fucked up. 